awakening and relationship. How does these two fit together? What happens in our relationships when we undergo this process? If we are to understand by awakening as the process of realignment of all inner energies, or above all realignment of the vital force within our physiology that allows the process of transformation to take place, then we'd have to acknowledge that awakening of that latent energy, or else known as Kundalini, is the awakening to who we truly are, rather than perpetuation in this whole circle of who we consider ourselves to be. So awakening in itself is the realignment of all sorts, which leads to a radical shift in perception, or else radical shift in consciousness. Because Kundalini itself, as we have spoken before, is the energy of individuation. Kundalini, as the word presupposes, is the coiled energy from the root word Kunda. It coils to itself. So it's like consciousness is literally coiled within. And that coiling within, that what allows the experience on individual level to take place. It is that portion of Kundalini that identifies with the body that we know as ego consciousness. The consciousness that is subordinate to the identification with the temporal manifested reality, with the reality which we know as the body. So what happens during the process of uncoiling of that energy? What happens when that energy is being steered and has enough power within for the process of profound unfoldment to take place? In other words, the rising, the ascent, Well, it seems from our personal experiences and from what we've understood so far is that awakening itself can make an individual to undergo a profound sense of dissociation. And that this dissociation is not a dissociation which uh, has anything to do with some kind of uh, psychic or psychotic disorders, a subject of um, you know, medical research. We as humanity yet have very little understanding of this whole phenomenon. And hopefully the more professionals in the field, and I'm talking about professionals as scientists, will look into it without any prejudice, the more perhaps will be able to understand about this whole process, based on personal experiences and clinical observations. What interests us here is that the individual, when undergoing the process of awakening, becomes at once more powerful and more vulnerable, becomes more sensitive and yet capable of withstanding profound stresses, profound, anything that would be thrown on that individual. Because the energy of Kundalini is about amplifying all that it is already present in that individual. In essence, it's consciousness that awakens to itself. So the process of uncoiling of that energy is, takes place in consciousness. So this whole drama that the seeker 
you know, the awakened one at that stage undergoes is the profound drama of universal in nature. So one has to be very careful what kind of relationships one attracts during that period. Simply because Kundalini itself is extremely attractive. Distinction has to be made between being attractive and becoming attractive because the energy is being highly active. And there are many examples when people literally ooze that energy in the, you know, during the process, you know, when they undergo that, especially the early stages, you know, before the dies offs, you know, before the kind of like the dissolution of the ego and the consequent repose or return of Kundalini back into the physiology. You know, the descent of consciousness back into the physiology. But that is, for some, a far, far distant process. We want to focus here on what happens to the individual who undergoes this process in relation to all his relations or her relations that had existed prior that, to that awakening or have been formed during that process. So what happens to the consciousness that, consciousness that is awakened to itself? How does that consciousness still very much on the individual level find itself in relating to the other beings to everything that basically becomes in close contact with that conscious individual. It is a very interesting phenomenon. It's actually quite paradoxical because ultimately speaking, this whole process of awakening, this whole process of what we call enlightenment, this whole process of self-realization is to be able to relate to the others from a qualitatively new platform. It is to be able to relate to the others ultimately from the heart level exclusively, which means that this whole notion of individual construct, this whole individual sort of bound reality would have to go through the pro process of um, deconstruction because it's impossible. We have too many safety mechanisms. We have too many uh, barriers that will not allow individual consciousness to perceive the world through the spectacles of the unbounded love. It will not allow the individual bound consciousness to perceive the world as it is, as one mass of conscious, eternally vibrating in bliss, in love, in all that what we understand as the highest expressions of human potential. But before all that is fully manifested and integrated back into the physiology, we are left very much with who we are in that process of awakening. And all our relationships, likewise, become a very crisp mirrors of that process. And it's very important that the one who undergoes through that process have a very clear idea that during the process of awakening we are capable of projecting a lot of what is taking place within and that what takes place within is the radical shift in perception outward often often overlooking the as yet 
so to speak, imperfection that exists on the outside in a way that we kind of blind in ourselves because we have this newly budded, newly born consciousness which is extremely fragile and all it wants is to embrace the world, you know, to embrace all the relationships that we have on the outside and above all the most intimate relationships. So this is the danger of the projection of that freshly budded consciousness into the relationship that might have, from the objective point of view, a very, very different ground. And many spiritual seekers find ourse found ourselves in those predicaments when they are, so to speak, trying to balance two very different platforms of existence, or two different, very different worlds altogether. The one that is just giving birth to itself through the process of transmutation, and the one that was or has existed prior to that. It takes a tremendous amount of inner wisdom and balance to be able to see everything for what it is. Because during the periods of when consciousness is just, you know, awakened to itself, everything is very much in euphoria. We literally exist in that, you know, st still all these phenomenal um, experiences, all this beautiful um, phantasmagoria of, you know, communion with various divinities, you know, what have you. It's all according to each individual tradition. And there are no uh, prescribed recipes with what each person will go through. But at that kind of honeymoon of the awakening, everything is colored in a very different light. And the process of the, the necessary kind of like perspective you know, the detachment, that comes much later. It may surface here and there, but the understanding of the relationship for what it is, is very much colored from what is happening within. So who we are with at those moments is crucially important. It's crucially important because If the communion is based on complete transcendence of the egos, even at that kind of like, you know, state, a stage, then the relationship could be a very supportive and, you know, very reliable source and place from where the growth and further process can be experienced. Or it could be very stifling. It could become a major source of, you know, pulling back, especially if the relationship with someone who is very much into spirituality as well, and have read it all, have had it all, and suddenly that person is witnessing all this awakening in another, but unable to relate to that because it's beyond the scope of his or her capacity. It is utterly experiential and no mind can penetrate that. And yet if someone is steeped in that kind of I know it all already from the intellectual kind of you know read in books kind of uh, material then it is the worst kind of scenario because what happens is that the subtle jealousy might creep in or a sense of judgment, or yet the experience of awakening could be pathologized even uh, through the eyes of someone who is close to us. So we have to be very careful who we are with and whom we trust or whom we share with what we're going through during this 
very tender periods until consciousness is at least stabilized at a certain level before making its ascent further up the ladder of its own perfection.